as we have created you can see that we have created uh, instantiated the game object but they are coming down in the same form we don't want that we want them to be spawned one by one so for that what i'm going to do is that in this uh, in this uh, spawner action here that is attach to this spawner here i'm going to change some sort of logic to it for that first of all i'm going to create a transform and i'm going to name it as a free position and in this, uh, I'm going to copy and paste this one here. And I think this whole should do good. And instead of counting it to zero, I'm going to say that if that is equal to zero, you should return the child. And if not, then you should return the null. So what it do is that basically when, a, when the position is equal to zero, then it should return the position that this position is equal to zero. And one, that position is not equal to zero and when that position has some occupation in it then it should return null so basically it's a simple function in which we are finding the empty position now where we need to call it we need to create some sort of another spawner here because because we don't want it to be uh, we don't want it to be change uh, we don't want changing the spawner here we want some sort of new spawner uh, function so i'm going to name it as spawn spawn until so that this function should wait and uh, I think what I'm going to do is that first of all, I'm going to create a transform and this transform should have the position element and that is equal to the free position function. Now I'm going to create some sort of condition to it that if this position is null, then this should not go into it. And if this position has some sort of position in it, then we should create some sort of game object. And I'm going to copy and paste this thing over here. Instead of child.position, what I want is I want this position to be filled. So I'm going to write that position. Why isn't it writing? Position dot transform dot position. So now we got the position element here and we don't want it to be named at the child. We don't we want it to be of the position here because we want the parent of this position this position is basically this one here or this one or this one whenever which whichever is empty and the other thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to call this function again and again for that i'm going to see that if this has some sort of value in it free position then we are going to call this function if this function hasn't some sort of value or don't have some sort of value we are not going to call it so for that i'm going to use the invoke method here and in the what invoke does is basically it uh call the function by delaying some time we can uh, i'm calling this spawn until so i'm going to name that uh, spawn until and i'm going to put it under these uh, marks here i don't know what we call this but uh, some sort of double commas and i'm going to create a public let's say a delay public float delay and that delay would of be 0.5f because we want our next function to be delayed to some sort of value. So I'm going to say that delay. Now I am going to remove this spawner here with the new function that we have created that is the spawn until function. And in the update section here, I am going to remove where is that? Uh, where is that here? here it is so i'm going to remove it with the spawn until function so let me give you a quick recap what we have done we have created a transform free position this transform free position should hold the free position that is going to be now whatever the free position is it should pass that free position to this child here and whenever we got something in the child we are going into this spawn until function and we are saying that our free position function is equal to this position here, which is also of the transform type. You can see that this is also of the transform time type and our free position is also of the transform type. Now we have some sort of position into this position here. And I'm saying that if our position has some value in it, then we are going into this if statement here. And the, in the if statement, I'm going to instantiate the piano tile. But this time, I'm not going to set it to child.position. I'm going to set it to this position, which is uh, one of these three positions here. And the other thing that I'm going to do is that if we got some value in this function here, then we are going to delay it again and again. We are going to call it again and again by some delay. Let's see what happens. And uh, they are coming all again. I think I haven't saved that. Yeah, that was it. 
let's see what happens you can see that now they are coming one by one and we are getting a good look about this and you can see that now we the things are working like they are in a piano tiles like we are playing some sort of piano tile game here and I'm going to create some other uh, positions here so that we should have some other positions as well and I'm going to create these here and I'm going to also change their position as well because I want sorry for this one I'm going to leave it here for this one I'm going to put it here and for this one I'm going to change it somewhere here now you can see that we got a good animation going on we got good uh, piano tiles coming down here you can see that you can see that now the thing is that these piano tiles are colliding with each other and we don't want them to collide with each other so for that uh, we are going into the layer matrix and let's go into the first of all let's create a layer I'm going to call it as the piano tile and for that uh, I'm going to name my the piano to the piano tiles here and I'm going to go into this uh, where is that project setting and in the layer matrix you can see that the piano tiles can collide with the piano tiles we don't want it so we are going to uncheck it now when we head back into the game you can see that piano tiles can now come on top of each other now you can see that two piano tiles are coming on top of each other and I think that's good yeah now we have some sort of game going on now we are going to establish some so sort of touching or clicking on the piano tiles and changing the color on it so let's move on the second part of the game